Hey, Grand Rising. How is everyone doing? Um, welcome to my Darts channel. Uh, Grand Elevation. My name is Francesca Abbey, founder, chief executive officer, and executive director at Darts, Diaspora and African Repatriation Tourism Service, Aquaba. Welcome to our Darts, a newly revised Darts channel. Dynamic Artists Renaissance T Socials. Still darts. See, Dynamic D Artist A Renaissance R T T Socials S. So, still darts, but with a twist where we'll explore our artistic abilities as we sip tea and sometimes spill the tea or whatever beverage of choice. While I create my art, I will also share casual, productive, and informative discussion about the current predicaments we find ourselves in and what each of us can do to share, to enhance our quality of life, despite whatever maybe we may be facing. If this type of content is something that you would be interested in participating in, in the future, please like, share, and subscribe to my channel, and hit the notification bell so you'll always know when I've uploaded new content. Please let me know in the comment section below if you would like for me to go live with these paint and sip style um, videos, which that's pretty much what it's getting ready to be. The Dynamic Artist Resonance uh, Renaissance Tea Socials is basically like a paint and sip, you know, a virtual paint and sip, okay? So, except, um, well, I'll explain. So the topic for this show is diversifying alternative resources to survive. Also darts, diversifying D, alternative A, Resources are T to to T <laughs> uh, survive S darts darts diaspora repatriation F, darts diaspora African repatriation tourism service YouTube channel is diversifying by incorporating a new concept of virtual artistic reawakening get-togethers. Therefore. DARTS is also the acronym for Dynamic Artists uh, Renaissance Tea Socials. We have revised our DARTS channel of acronym to Dynamic Artists uh, Renaissance Tea, search, to, ugh, Tea Socials, I can't talk, to reflect the temporary change to our content, our DARTS YouTube channel content, to meet the current stay in place challenges we may soon be facing again. Um, in a previous video, the survival of Ghana tourism during potential pandemic lockdowns and travel bans, I discussed focusing on our resilience rather than on their crisis, if you know what I mean. Anyway, in that video, I discussed how DOTS will diversify our business model by offering online classes in Ghanaian God language customs and protocol traditions, uh, by conducting online support groups for those who wish to connect with others, and by providing virtual excursions of scenic tourist sites in and around Greater Accra. Check out that video. Um, and, uh, you know, check out the whole video because it basically describes how DARTS is temporarily making the, tra the transformation, the changes, temporarily, um, potentially temporarily, um, if and when this whole CVID thing blows over and you know they all they become onto something else you know decide to do something else 
and uh, lockdowns and bans are lifted and we can start traveling and touring and repatriating again, then, uh, you know, I will revert back to the DART's Diaspora and African Repatriation Tourism Service um, content. But for now, DART's has now re-strategized by prioritizing our focus on positive content that brings joy to our subscribers and viewers. While we all wait in place for the storm of challenges to pass us by, we decided to make this temporary change to our channel content due to the effects that the potential pandemic lockdowns and travel bans coming down the pike could have on travel to Ghana and to uh, stay connected with our subscribers and viewers until conditions for tourism and repatriation become more favorable. Even with this temporary transformation, DARTS will still continue to reach out to African diasporans on this channel to discuss all matters concerning repatriation to Ghana, current events, and lockdown coping strategies, and will share our day-to-day -day experiences, Ghanaian and diasporan cultural exchanges of culinary and natural healing traditions, as well as offer spiritual and emotional upliftment through creative expression such as spoken word and virtual or uh, visual art not virtual art visual art these videos will be sort of like modified virtual paint and sips but less structured and more fun where i'll share with you my thoughts as i either paint or draw sculpt or design art and sip tea, water, juice, or any beverage of my choice. And you're welcome to join me. How, you ask? Easy. After watching this video, you can take time to decide what art you're going to create, set up your space for your artwork, gather your supplies, then replay the video at whatever time is most convenient for you and socialize with me as we create art together. Easy. I've never actually been to a paint and sip before, but I have painted at home while I sip at home. So why not share it with you two? From what I understand, most paint and sips are pre-planned structured, rigid, and time sensitive. The host or hostess has everyone painting the same thing, sipping from a small selection of alcoholic beverages in a uh, venue on a specific date and at a specific time for only a few hours. Our darts dynamic artist Renaissance tea socials are self-motivated, self-paced, artistic, reawakening virtual get-togethers. The reason why they're not considered paint and sips is because I won't always be painting. Uh, sometimes I may be drawing, sculpting, doing decoupage. Look it up if you don't know what decoupage is. Google it. Creating a diorama. Look that up too if you don't know what that is. Uh, designing or even reciting poetry or drumming. I call it a tea social with the thought of a few elements of high tea in mind. If you don't know what high tea is, look that up too. Google it. In my, uh, although we may not always be sipping tea and we may not always be even eating tea sandwiches that they normally do at high tea, while we're creating our art, which can become very messy and inconveniencing to paint with one hand and eat with the other. You get confused and put the paint in your mouth and the food on the, on the canvas <laughs> or something. Um, I came to Ghana a year ago to live my life to the fullest and enjoy the rest of my years by leisurely creating beautiful art and that's exactly what I'm going to do now, what I'm doing now. Actually, not going to. I've been doing it. 
and I want to encourage others to bring out their inner artists as well. For me, from here on, my life will be one long paint and sip party. Won't you join me? With that said, let's get this party started. First of all, please allow me to show you some of the artwork that um, I have hanging around my makeshift uh, home art studio in my living room. Don't judge. <laughs> my actual official art studio, which will be in my second bedroom, is under construction. Uh, so let me, let me just take this uh, laptop and just kind of show you around a little bit. Uh, let's see, what am I doing? Okay, disconnecting this so I can walk around with the laptop. And bear with me. But this apron that I'm wearing, I made it from a head wrap. I was like, uh, ooh, I started getting paint on all my clothes. So I said, well, let me just go ahead and make me an apron. Can't afford to buy one, so I made one. Uh, so these are masks that I made out of cardboard. Um, all cardboard, even the shiny copper colors that's on there is actually cardboard party plates. This is the male and this is the female. These are um, Ga masks of strength. Ga is one of the uh, cultures of, of Ghanaian um, tradition. Uh oh, I knocked something over. Oh well. Okay. Um, this is my little makeshift studio set up here. Uh, this is a painting that's actually a mixed media painting because it's done with acrylic paints and, um, and pencil, color pencils. And, uh, this is an interesting piece that I did. I decided I didn't want to just only paint the ocean. I love painting the ocean, seascapes, but I wanted to actually put some other elements in it. So I put a hand reaching out across the Atlantic Ocean to diasporan Africans who want to repatriate. And uh, so I, I'm hoping I'm holding it high enough. So, and this is a mixed media again, painting and pencil, acrylic paint, pencil, and I actually use sand and rocks for the ground. And I actually use twigs to make the logs that the man is carrying on his head. And uh, this is the female version. If you can look, I can't hold them both and then hold the laptop too. But if you can see the female version, uh, she's actually carrying, I don't know what they're supposed to be, but what I made them out of was uh, cow peas. And you can see the baskets, I used uh, yarn and everything. So I'm just getting my creativity on. Uh, back to my little setup here. Hope I don't knock anything else over. Uh, oh boy, okay. I need to plug my laptop back in, so bear with me on that one. I'll be right back. Okay. Okay, I'm back. So, let's see how how we're doing here. Okay. All right. So, with all of that said, um, I'm going to be kind of off camera a little bit so that the uh, canvas that I'm working on can be on camera. So, as you can see, I have my table here. 
with I don't have a lot of tables I don't have a lot of furniture at all I'm just still a year in and I'm still trying to get it together so it is what it is you know but this is my little table here I even got some paint on it already you probably can't see it from there but um, that's my art setup this is my sip Um, jumping ahead of myself here. Okay, so um, what we're painting today, what I'm creating t tonight actually, I'm working on a 16 by 20 inch canvas with mixed media of acrylic paints and colored pencils of a portrait of a cat. Let me just turn the, my makeshift easel around. You know, desperate, uh, what is, how, how does the saying go? Um, well, I don't know how the saying goes, but I was desperate. I needed an easel. I didn't have one. I had this big cardboard box around, so I made it happen. I made so much stuff out of cardboard boxes. It's crazy. But anyway, so I'm hoping that you can see this cat that... Um, I started uh, in pencil. Let me just turn the board up a little bit. He's actually a really big cat. So I'm doing the outline of the cat. That's what I'll be doing. Um, let's see. In pencil, I'm doing the outline in pencil, in color pencils. And I'll be painting, you know, him and penciling him and until I get him right, <laughs> you know. So with that said, I'm going to look at this here. This is an oil container I have holding my pencils, my color pencils in. Uh, looking for the colors that I was using before. I think this, uh, I, I want to use that one. Let me see, where are my pencil colors? Okay, here's one. And see these pencils, these are really not expensive pencils. These, I, I bought them at ShopRite, you know, in the arts supply section. Uh, my money, my funds are limited, so I can't really go to the art supply store and invest in really nice art supplies so I do what I can with what I have to work with but anyway let me get started oh I got my pencils okay so yeah let me just this uh, cardboard made easel and I even made my palette out of cardboard and wax paper you see the cardboard and scotch tape and wax paper you know, I've already started using it on something else I was painting. This, this is, I have art supplies that are supposed to be, that I packed from when I was in the divisive states um, and asked someone to send them to me and they're just now getting around to deciding to send them. So I will, um, once I receive them, then I'll, everything will be golden then. So let's let's get started here. Uh, let's see. I think I was working with this pencil here. So I'm just basically. Oh, I forgot one thing. One thing. Um. One other thing. So that's what I'm painting. So this is a 16 by 20 inch canvas with mixed media of acrylic paints and color pencils of a portrait of a cat that I was commissioned to create for someone. Now what I'm sipping, what I'm sipping tonight, I'm sipping my new favorite signature cocktail, a virgin ginger pina colada. I concocted from a mixture of concentrated ginger juice and pineapple coconut juice. I named it GPS, Ghana Party Starter. It is so delicious. The concentrated ginger has such a spicy kick 
that no alcohol is needed. And yes, I do drink alcohol beverages occasionally, but not often. But this, this is, this tastes better than alcohol actually. And with um, paint and sip, I'm not real sure that it's advisable to, you know, sip while you're painting too much alcoholic beverage because it may reflect on what you're painting. <laughs> it may have a reflection on what you're painting. So I say let's let's just uh, sip. You can sip tea, milk, juice, water. You know whatever you want to sip on. You don't have to sip anything at all. You know it's just a suggestion. So what I'm doing, I'm creating the fur. Okay, I'm creating the fur on the cat in a, a light brown um, color pencil. Let me move this out the way because it's disturbing me now. I'm not going to use that pencil right away anyway. Okay, uh, by doing up and down motions around the, the pencil line because I actually penciled it in. You can't, you can't really see it. Oh, I need my pencil sharpeners. You can't really see the, the lead pencil line that I outlined that I drew the cat with. But you can vaguely, barely see the penciling of the... Oh, you know what? I do need my eraser and my pencil sharpeners. You do, you are able to see what I've already started. Let me just, I'll be right back. Let me just get my um, erasers and sharpeners. I thought I had everything set up, but I didn't. Okay. All right. So this is my look at this. This is a um a bottled water bottle that I cut small just to hold my uh, eraser. And my sharpeners, because they always, you know, they get in the way. So I've made a lot of these containers for my makeup, for just other little things, you know. They come in handy. Just uh, cut the bottle down, the, the water bottle down to the size that you need it. And um, I took a flame, light flame, to around the edges to keep from cutting myself on the rough edges. But yep, it's my sharpeners and erasers. I need this eraser right now because I already started wrong. <laughs> I started wrong. I need to, as I go around, you know, to, um, let me just bend this down a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. I'm erasing the, the lead pencil line as I go along and uh, not completely I'm just erasing it just enough so that I can see um I can still see it you know but I'm doing my little up and down motions this might be the wrong cup this is the I don't know what color this is this might be the wrong color maybe not but it's not for some reason we're not coloring okay there we go all right, so I'm doing these up and down motions uh, to create the fur. I'm working on this tail now, the tail of the cat. Because I did the face already. I mean, it's not finished, obviously. You know, I still have a ways to go. Now, it's tricky working on this cardboard um, back panel. Because, uh, you know, when I bought the, the canvas, I went to Osu, to this art supply store called Acrylics, to buy um, canvas board. And for some reason, I had a tremendous brain fart once I got in the store. Because it was like, ooh, art supplies. Oh, I went bananas, man, in there. I was like, oh, God. But then, you know, of course, you know, when your funds are limited, you can't buy everything in the store. So, and then I had someone waiting for me, 
in a taxi and you know I was rushed and wasn't thinking clearly and I bought this canvas paper that you see hanging up on the wall there and I'm like what the hell oh man I was so disappointed and it's expensive too but I really need the canvas board you know so that I don't have to staple my paper onto cardboard because now I'm saying that because underneath this paper the cardboard is uneven and is making for a difficult flat surface for the pencil but you know what I'm resourceful like that and I'm making it work I'm making it work so it's all good so yeah uh, let's see okay so I did that part so now I'm going to erase some more of this lead pencil line just enough so that I can see what I'm doing and wait I have a brush here I, I just brush off the erase you don't want to use your hand because you may smear the sweat and oils from your hands why is this brush wet I can't imagine why this brush is wet. Okay. I mean, I haven't used this brush in about a week. There's no reason for it to still be wet. I think it's just the handle that's wet. Okay. Don't want it to smear anything. I was just talking about the sweat and oils from your hands, and I don't want this to smear. Even though if it did, I will find a way to fix it. But, um, yeah, let's erase some more. So you basically want to draw your outline. I draw my outline in um, regular lead pencil. I probably should have drawn it in color pencil, but eh, next time, you know. So yeah, I'm just doing the outline of the fur, doing these up and down motions across the lead pencil line um, that I drew. Let me show you something. I forgot to show you. I'll be right back. Most artists draw from a reference photo. This is my reference photo. <laughs> Um, it's not a photo. I actually drew it on paper, um, all color pencil. Let me see if I can get a little bit closer so you can see what I did with the fur and everything. The cat eyes, I kind of messed up the cat eyes. I didn't do the cat eyes well. Um, those look like more like human eyes than cat eyes. So I was like, okay, let me watch some videos and see what cat eyes are supposed to look like. So yeah, so this is my reference photo here of how you see the fur and everything and you know just I just did it just so that I have something to reference from when I do this big one. So we put them down over there and someone saw that reference photo and fell in love with it, well photo, reference drawing and fell in, in love with it and asked me to uh, do this big one so that's what I'm working on that's why why I'm working on it yep, time for a sip paint and sip oh that stuff is so delicious man so delicious wait okay so we're going along going along here yeah, so uh, in terms of uh, conversation, did you hear about the 30 tornadoes that ran through six states in the divisive states all in one night? How is that even possible? Unless there's some evil genius with a, a weather machine, <laughs> you know? Hey, man, that was, I just heard about it. My internet has been down for almost a month, and so I haven't been keeping up with the current events or the news. I haven't been on YouTube to listen to the YouTube 
you know, uh, rhetoric. So I had no idea what was going on until maybe yesterday, actually yesterday, when a family member called me and told me what was going on. And I'm like, what? Hey, how is that even possible? That is spooky. That is straight up spooky, man. You know, uh, what are you going to do? This, <laughs> this is what what happens, you know. Um, I guess it could be some people, my, my girlfriend in the DS, she uh, chalked it up to people going up in space a lot, you know, lately, you know, travel and tourism in outer space, you know, wow, more power to them, you know, but um, I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm sticking with my evil genius with the weather machine theory, <laughs> you know, because 30 tornadoes in one night hit running through six states. Now, I used to live in Indianapolis, Indiana. Um, that was the, I mean, I was born and raised in New York City and um, I lived in San Antonio, Texas for a little while. I lived, um, oh yeah, you know, there. <laughs> and when I moved to Indianapolis, Indiana, I was in denial about tornadoes because we virtually didn't have tornadoes in New York City and I never experienced one in San Antonio, Texas either. So when the news report came on and said, oh, there's going to be tornadoes when there's a tornado, you have to, if you're in the house, you have to go and get in your bathtub and uh, cover your, your head with a mattress. And I'm like, what the hell are these people talking about? Then getting in the bathtub and cover your head with a mattress. I'm not doing that. Lo and behold, mm, 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 tornado hit, boy. Tornado hit. It tore the roof off of my neighbor's house. We lived in an apartment complex, but their building was separate from our building, but they were like right next door. Well, actually, were they right next door or around the corner? They were around the corner from us. Tore the roof off of, they had the whole roof and sucked the furniture out of the living room. The young lady that was sitting in the living room at the time, just before it hit, she decided to get up and go and use the washroom, the restroom. And boom, tornado hit, ripped the roof off of their house and flattened their car with the roof. Let, it was a SUV that flattened it like a cow, like a pancake. I saw it. I didn't see it happening, but I saw the after effects. And um, her and her brother and his wife and their baby had to come and stay with us for about three weeks. But when I say us, I mean me and my uh, husband, Albert, at the time. You know, because they had nowhere to stay nothing to eat everything was you know a mess and the um apartment complex or oh, they had insurance they had good insurance the apartment complex had to repair the roof and you know repair some things so they had to stay somewhere while these repairs were being made they were Ghanaian also so um they didn't really have anybody else to turn to but us um albert and i so I was more than happy to let them stay with us, you know, until they got back on their feet. It's the least anyone can do for someone in that predicament, you know. But that was one tornado in one state on one night. And since then, you know, there have been other tornadoes. And once that happened, Man, I got smart real quick. You know, the, the tornado said, you're going to learn today. Okay? We're going to take tornadoes seriously. And I started taking it very seriously. They say if you're in your car and a tornado, you see a tornado coming at you, 
or somewhere nearby, what you do is go ahead and um, take your belongings, your important belongings, get out of the car, lock your car, go lie in a ditch and pull something over you so that when a tractor or a cow or a truck lands on you, what? <laughs> what? If it lands on you, they pull something over you. Is that, that's like putting up an umbrella when a bomb is getting ready to land right on your head. You know, what the heck? Don't make me say bad words on this channel, man. <laughs> but, <laughs> I again, I was like, this is some foolishness. They basically don't want you to see when you're getting ready to die. That's what that sounds like to me, and that's some foolishness. And, you know, I won't see that shit coming. <laughs> okay. So, okay, erasing some more. We making our way around the body of the kitty cat. I haven't named this cat. I haven't. I did name some of my paintings. Um, I didn't tell you the names, but uh, I probably will at some point. Uh, let's see. Yeah, we're working our way around. So this is going to be a really huge... Let me show you how what I've accomplished so far. Let me turn this around a little bit. This cardboard is hanging on a folding chair, which is not cooperating with me right now. I don't know what going on. So, I don't know if you can I'll bring it a little closer. You can see how far I've gotten so far. Uh, oh, there we are. Okay. So I'm making my way up the hindy parts of the kitty cat. Slowly but surely. And, you know, and enjoying talking with you. Um, I probably won't finish this during this video. Um, you know, you don't want to sit and watch two hours of me coloring and painting, I'm pretty sure. But this is just to inspire you to, you know, especially if you're locked down. I don't know what the DS, the Divisive States, is getting ready to do you know, uh, come January 1st or February 1st or whatever. I don't know what their plans are next for people, you know. But if you find yourself locked down and you can't go anywhere, can't travel, can't, you know, go to wherever, if they lock the movie theaters and restaurants and other event places down, event venues down, and you're staying in place, try to think of some things to do that you can do that make you happy. Um, art makes me happy. Art definitely makes me happy. It changes my whole emotional dynamics, you know, like um, if I'm feeling depressed or something, you know, about whatever, I can just go and paint or draw or sculpt or do something and don't say well i'm not an artist i don't know how to do anything everybody has some type of art uh ability they just haven't found it yet you just haven't found it yet everybody has it um find it try different things you know even if it's it doesn't have to be painting, it doesn't have to be drawing, it doesn't have to be uh, coloring. You can buy paint by numbers. Buy a paint by numbers set, which is a lot of fun, you know. It's not just for children. Um, I was working on a job at a call center and we would sit for hours and hours and hours waiting for the phones to ring. So our employers, our supervisors, encouraged us to buy coloring books and crayons and well they didn't encourage us but they allowed it and um i was like you know i haven't been coloring in a coloring book in, in years why would i want to do that <laughs> you know but 
it, I saw other people doing it. All my coworkers and their cubbies were doing it. So, and I was bored sitting there, you know. So I said, well, let me try this out. Let me get, and they have like adult coloring books, you know, for, and I, when I say adult coloring books, I'm not talking about dirty books, you know. I'm not talking about X-rated dirty books. I'm talking about coloring books that are more elaborate and um, more detailed and everything. And uh, you can definitely enjoy, you know, the coloring on there. So I did that for some time. Um, if you're not, if you really don't want to do art, do poetry, write poetry. You know, it's, it's an art form. Write poetry, play a musical instrument, or start learning online. I mean, YouTube will teach you how to do anything you want to do. Go online and look at some of the videos on the instruments, um, tutorials that you want to play, and get the instrument and start playing. You know, do something. Don't just sit there. You know, I talk to people all the time, people my age and older, I'm going to turn 67 in January, the end of January. I talk to people my age and above that are retired and all they do is just sit and stare at the idiot box. Hours upon hours, days upon days. They don't try to do anything with their lives. And when there was an old saying, I don't know where the saying came from, but it says, you don't stop dancing because you grow old. You grow old because you stop dancing. And I say the same thing. Your mind will start to go if you don't keep it active with something. Do crossword puzzles, do Sudoku or Whatever, I, I never like Sudoku. I don't do it. I, me and numbers don't get along, except for my count my money and count my time. That's the only time I like numbers. But um, do something with your life. Don't just let your life pass you by because somebody told you that you're old. Age is just a number, honey. I'm the energizer bunny going and going and going and flowing and showing you if I can live a healthy life and you can do it too. It, uh, that's from one of my poems. But, um, yeah, live your life, man. You know, you're only getting this one chance. And I say over and over and again, and I know people are tired of hearing it and I'll never get tired of saying it. Tomorrow is not promised to anyone. My life could be over in the next 15 minutes. You know, the next 15 minutes, 15 days, 15 hours, 15 months. We don't know. So, I know that the spirit will still be conscious after the body dies. So, your spirit will be kicking you in your spiritual behind. Why didn't you do this? Why didn't you do that? Now we can't do nothing. We spirit. We can't do nothing. We can't do no art. We can't do nothing. You know, all we can do is just float around and do whatever, you know. But enjoy your life. Sip what you want to sip. I'm about to sip some more. This is a, a good thing it's not alcohol because I'd be tipsy right now. Oh, child. <laughs> yeah, so I plan to do more of these videos. Um, I actually do, um, rock painting. I went to the beach last week and, uh, Quasi and I actually went to the beach last week. It is, uh, in the, in the DS, going to the beach is like a really big thing, you know, but here where I live in Coprobite in Greater Accra, going to the beach is like basically going up the road because the beach is six minutes away from where I live in this cottage. And um, so, well, we went there, you know, it's not a big thing. We didn't take food, we didn't take anything. We're in the car six minutes away. You get hungry, you go home and eat. 
but we did um, collect rocks and seashells. I was going to show you the rocks that I collected, but I had to clear the table off so we could eat our fish. Uh, so it's okay, it's all good. You know, you only got one table, you gotta work with what you got. But yeah, I will just show you the finished products when I paint on the rocks. This particular cat that I'm doing, well, actually, this cat that I did a uh, reference picture for, this, I did this for my rock painting because I intended to paint that cat on a rock, maybe with better eyes, of course, you know. But, um, uh, oh, excuse me. Yeah, that's what I planned to do. And, um, I haven't gotten around to it yet. I was a little bit under the weather, not seething, okay? You know, back in the day when we say, oh, a little under the weather, nobody thought nothing about it. But now because of seething, if you was caught, <coughs> everybody, oh, gosh, she got seething. Oh, get away, get away. No, man. You know, there's other things. You know, this time of the year here in Ghana, everybody gets a little under the weather. Quasi's a little under the weather. His son was a little under the weather. Like, you know, and it lasts for a little while, then it goes away. But um, I'm okay now. Quasi made some medicine for us with uh, some leaves, um, some male leaf, male neem leaves and female neem leaves, some lemon and how many, five other leaves that he told me the names of, but I couldn't remember, I couldn't pronounce them, you know, but I couldn't remember them also. So, um, yeah, he made it and I was starting to feel better for a little while and so was he. And then we just kind of relapsed them, but it's all good. I know it's not seabed though. So don't start talking about that. I don't embrace that at all. I don't accept it um, as being what's, what's going on with me or him. I just say, you know, it's this time of the year. And I'm good, I'm good. I'm actually stronger today because what? I'm up doing this video and my internet is back on, so I'm real happy. I'm real, real happy. As I'm doing this particular um, art piece, I've already recorded a video prior to this, so I'm hoping that you get a chance to check it out. You know, and it's actually uploading as we speak. So, let's see, let me erase some more. We're making some headway here, man. Once you have the outline of the cat going on, you know, then filling in the rest the way, you know, filling in the rest the way I did with this cat, with the, you know, making the hairs and everything will be really nice. It'll be easy, you know, but you got to do the outlines first. Well, at least, well, you don't have to. That's just my way. Of, of doing it. I may be doing it wrong, I don't know. But I just wanted to get this outline started. I'm not rushing. I was commissioned to do this this uh, art piece by someone, but I'm not rushing. They're not rushing me, and I'm not rushing to get it done. I'm just taking my time. So I do a little bit each day as I feel up to it, you know, if I don't feel up to it, I don't work on it. You know, I just take my time and get whatever I can get done. And so this thing is slipping, I have to find a way to anchor it. Uh, yeah, well, okay. So we're going, coming around home stretch here. Almost done with this outlining of the cat and I have to actually mix my paint or maybe not I, I may end up doing the whole thing in pencil because that's what this is this isn't mixed media this is all pencil and a little pen little black pen around the eyes but um this is all pencil I may do the whole thing in pencil 
if my pencils hold up, I may have to buy some more pencils when I get money, when I get to the mall. Because uh, I can see, you know, certain colors that I favor are starting to get small. <laughs> and I'm, you know, sharpening them. And in fact, this one could use a little sharpening right now. My trusty sharpeners. I have two sharpeners because some pencils sharpen well in one sharpener and not the other. You know, so I said, well, let me just use both of these. One I brought from the Divisive Stakes. I already had it, and this purple one, I bought it here in Ghana, um, thinking it would be better, but, you know, it's, it's okay. It's all right. Yeah, so, okay, that's a little bit better. You gotta continue sharpening your pencils, you know, when you see it getting fuzzy looking, and when your lines aren't sharp anymore. Um, you want to really, you want the hair of the cat to really stand out, you know, and the only way you're going to do that is if you keep your pencil point sharp so that uh, you can see every little line of hair on the cat. You know, I don't like the way this cat's chin is. When I finish coming around this circle of cat body, I'm going to fix the cat's chin. And he has a human chin. I don't think cats have chins like that. And it looks kind of lopsided. So, you know, the good thing about doing this in color pencil is that you can certainly erase it, you know, and, uh, and fix whatever you don't like. Yeah. So, erasing, erasing. Hey, we almost done with this uh, outlining here. So what I'm going to do, once I finish doing this, going around this circle of cat body, big, fat, juicy cat body here. You see how he's coming? Oops, I just hit the computer. He's coming along nicely. Uh... He's big. You didn't think he was going to be that big. He's a big, fat cat. I love fat, fluffy cats. I wish I had one. You know, I, I love cats, especially now here in Ghana, more so than when I was in the, U the DS. I, I wanted one when I was in the DS, but, you know, because I think they're just adorable and sweet and they're wonderful companions. But um, now I want the cat to work. I want to hire a cat. Yes, I want to put a cat on payroll for these lizards and these water bugs the size of eggs. You know, they're driving me bananas here and you know, I'm a city girl. I'm not used to this. You know, you country folks, you know, and Caribbean folks, it doesn't bother you because you grew up around it. I did not. And I'm not going to apologize for where I was born and raised and how I respond to these animals. But you know what? A cat can take care of business up in here right now. A cat can definitely take care of business. And uh, I will hire the cat. Of course, he'll be my employee, but also my friend and companion. You know? However, there's an issue. Oh, I lost my pencil. Oh man, what do I do with it? Is it under here? Oh crap. How do you lose a pencil? How in the world do you lose a pencil? Okay, I got it. it was, I was sitting on it. I, I didn't move. I didn't get up. It just rolled up under my butt. <laughs> okay. So yeah, almost there. Yeah. So yeah, a cat can definitely take care of business. The only thing is, I'm concerned that I'm kind of grossed out about cats eating lizards and bugs in front of me. Or even behind, it just makes me nauseous just thinking about it. But at least I think that if the animals are smart, which I would like to think they might be, they, once they realize there's a cat in the house, they may not want to come into this party. 
You know, they may decide, okay, you know, that's not a safe environment anymore. We, we're not coming in. You know? Um, and the cat will chase them away, chase them around, at least, you know. And, uh, you know, so that'll be his job, his or her job. And in turn, for their rendered services, I will treat the cat like a prince or a princess. You know, the best of everything, the best, well, food, you know, the cat's going to eat what I eat, basically. <laughs> but, you know, if I eat well, the cat eats well. If I'm eating leftovers, the cat's eating leftovers. But um, occasionally I will buy cat food if I can afford it. And um, definitely some cat treats. And just really, you know, give the cat all my love and attention and everything. Most people don't want to get a pet, well, didn't want to get a pet in the past because they thought they were going to be traveling a lot and be away from the pet, you know, for some time. And the pet would get lonely and bored and go crazy from nothing to do. But if you're in a position where everything is staying in place now, that's null and void now, you know, you can go... You don't have, you're not going anywhere. Where are you going? So you can get a cat now or a pet, a dog or whatever, and you're always there and you don't have to worry about leaving them at a dog pound or kitty cat hotel, which they do have. Uh, surprise me, knock me over with a feather. Cat hotel. I can't even afford to stay in a hotel. Cats and dogs got hotels to stay in. And I mean five star and five diamond hotels for cats and dogs. Well, if you're a pet lover, like some people are, they don't mind spending that money for it. But, you know, I'm a pet lover, but I'm also, I also like my money, you know, and I really can't afford to, to, um, pay for the cats or the dogs stay in a five star or five diamond hotel when I can't stay anywhere, you know, like that myself. But who knows, maybe if Darts kicks off nicely, maybe I will be able to, who knows. But for now, I'm just redoing this cat's uh, jawline because I didn't like the way I'd done it before. Um, and he had like a little funny looking sideways off-centered pointed chin which was disturbing me for some reason. I mean some cats do have a pointed chin but this is a big fat round fluffy cat so you know I, the chin just didn't set well with me at all at all so yep okay we made it around and uh, I forgot to give the kitty a mouth. So I'm going to do that now. There. And that's it for now. Um, big, fat, juicy, fluffy cat with an attitude. You can see in his face and his eyes, he's kind of got like a little attitude. But it's okay. In the next video that I do, um, you know, for the arts, uh, visual arts, I will, before I start the video, before I start the artwork on another creation, I will show you the finished product of this beautiful cat. Hopefully by then it'll be finished. Or maybe not even the finished product, but I will show you the progress at least. Because I don't know when I'm going to finish this cat, you know. Because we're talking about a whole lot of pencil mark. Let me just show you. We want to start going around with the pencil marks. I'm going outwards with it. Starting inwards and going outwards. And just basically going around the same 
structure of cat body, you know, uh, staying within the outline that I already made, but definitely making lines and striations to make the hair of the cat. And this is going to be a tedious product, project, you know, making all these hairs, filling in all this cat body. So I'm not going to bore you with all of that. I'm just going to, I don't know if you can see. Let me just take this a little bit. You really can't see it on the camera. Um, but you'll see the finished product. So with that, I'm going to take a sip. Again, I'm going to move this makeshift easel out of the way and turn the camera back over here on me and uh, get ready to close out this video. Um, thank you so much for watching our darts channel. If what was shared and discussed here resonates with you in a positive way, and if this type of content, this, this uh, paint and sip style content, is something you would like to participate in, in the future, please like, share, and subscribe to my channel. And hit the notification button so you'll always know when I've uploaded new content. Please also let me know in the comment section below if you would like for me to go live with these paint and sip style videos. Um, yeah, so peace and upliftment. Thank you for watching.